end of February. I came home for a few days. So me and dad decided to go look for some antlers out here on the farm. Look at the food plots, look at the switchgrass. Kind of figure out what we need to do for this year. We're trying to get our plans together early rather than late like we always are. So we're gonna see if we can't find some antlers and take the dog for a run. She is itching to find some. Well, we made a big loop in the farm and we have only found two sheds they happen to be a match set we know we've got a bunch of bucks that are left over um, so we're pulling some trail cameras right now I guess we should have done this before we walked the whole farm but it's the end of February you would think most of them have dropped by now so we're gonna go look at some pictures and see what's going on and we've got a couple other things that uh, we're gonna do today on the farm to hopefully help out the habitat So we pulled some cameras and normally all of our bucks are dropped by now but it looks like all but two or three including this deer are still holding their antlers so that kind of sucks <laughs> i've only got like four or five days to be here to find antlers and to do some management work that we're wanting to do We've got a little, you know, we've done everything on this farm from, you know, food plots, of course, switch grass, and now we've enrolled some more CRP. Um, the next thing that we've kind of overlooked over the last several years is, is a good timber management plan. And we've got some stuff in there that, that's not good, and we've got chase burns coming down right now. We're gonna get in that timber, we're gonna explain to you what is bad, what is good, and we're gonna try to fix it here in the next few days. Only the best map available. <laughs> okay, so the plan today, we're gonna come in here. We've got a really bad case of bush honeysuckle throughout the farm and really the whole county. So we're gonna come in here. That's why you're here today. We wanna to know how to get rid of bush honeysuckle. It's taking over our whole woods. We've gotta get rid of it. So we're gonna start on this end, basically. This used to be old cattle pasture. Our right. cows always had this grub down. And four or five years ago now, we've taken the cows off and what has come back? Bush honeysuckle underneath our, our open hardwoods, mm -hmm. bush honeysuckle, 12 foot tall, <laughs> nothing underneath. So this is first year honeysuckle, right? This is what it looks like one year old. And basically about a foot and a half, two foot tall. It's a little bit smaller in diameter than a pencil. And when the ground is moist like this, it's so shallow rooted, you can pull it right out of the ground. You just leave it lay or pile it up or whatever, and it's gonna, roots are gonna dry out and it's gonna die. But by year two, it's three foot tall, it's a little bit bigger around, starts to get more like your finger, and you can still pull it out, but the roots get pretty long. And it grows super, super fast. So by year three or four, we're looking at plants like this, four or five foot tall, four or five years, and you're looking at something that's anywhere from 10 to 15, sometimes 20 foot tall. We're gonna find some of those when we get back in here. This one's too big. I'm not Hercules, so I'm probably not strong enough to get that one out of the ground. And that's where the chainsaw comes in. So this time of year, we can foliar spray, or can't. 
think? Go down the ground. You think so? So this time of year we can basil bark spray it. We don't have to cut it. We use a little bit more chemical if we do it that way, but we can spray just the say foot to 16 inches and down to the soil line. You don't want to waste a lot and get it all over the ground, but if you spray it right here, it'll absorb through the bark and into the cambium. And if you get it early enough before the sap starts to run, before this plant starts to come out of dormancy, you don't have to cut it. And with a little bit of chemical, you can get it killed. But uh, I've found that we get a better kill if it's this size, if we go ahead and cut it this time of year. If we cut it off clean and then we just use our little hand sprayer and put the chemical solution right on there and it won't come back to life. Getting ready to mix up our uh, forestry chemical. We use triclopyr, uh, brand name might be Garlon, but we use uh, generic and it's 61% concentrate. You'll hear about people using this uh, chemical called Crossbow. Crossbow has triclopyr in it, but it's very low, uh, low percentage of the actual chemical. So if you're spraying a lot of brush, if you're cutting like we're gonna be today and trying to kill bush honeysuckle, you're better off just buying a concentrate chemical like this. You get more, a lot further for your dollar. Um, and we're mixing it with uh, in a crop oil mix and then we're going to use a, a blue forestry dye so we can see where we've been and what we've hit and uh, there's nothing special about it. You can order all this stuff online. It's not uh, restricted use pesticides so um, we're going to mix up a pretty small dosage and you'll see how far such a little, uh, little quantity this chemical will take us. It'll actually go quite a long ways. A lot of people don't know if they have bush honeysuckle on their property or they say, I don't think I have much of it. I mean, I might have seen it once or twice. And if you showed them a bush right in front of them, they might know it, you know, if they saw it, but they don't perceive that they have that much of it in their timber. And the one time of year that it's undeniable, you're gonna be able to tell if you have it or not, is if you're sitting in a tree stand in the second or third week of November or first week of December, and you look around, and everything is, is defoliated. Everything's lost leaves, everything is brown or dead, but you see these little green bushes all through the timber, these little patches of green, that's honeysuckle. Like I said, it's the first thing to green up in the spring, it's the last thing to drop its leaves in the fall. As I was walking around today, looking for shed antlers, this particular portion of the farm, I could tell the deer are not using it as much. It's, this is up closer toward, our, toward the entrance of the property. And the deer always used to bed here. And we still want the deer to bed here because we're, we're limited on the amount of timber that we have on this piece. But if you look where I'm at right now, you can hear them working in the background. But if you look at where I'm at right now, you know, it looks like just the thickest, nastiest, you know, perfect bedding area. But when you get in here, the ground is really bare underneath and we've got a big giant canopy of these just bush honeysuckle. Right now it's as open as it will ever look because all the leaves are off of it but literally you come down in here anytime after green up all the way through mid-December and you can't see somebody that's standing 10 feet from you and it's so dark in here and there's no native plants, there's no brows for the deer underneath of this stuff. You know, they're gonna nibble on this stuff, they're gonna eat a little bit of it, but it's a straight monoculture right now. And you guys know that anything that's just a straight monoculture is never good. So, it's a lot of work. I'm getting out of it some of it right now because I'm getting around the camera, but watching everybody else work, so. We're trying to reclaim some bedding areas right here. We're gonna, we're gonna do the best we can to get rid of this stuff. This is gonna be a year after year process. And in the future, we're gonna plug in some oak trees to try to get a natural regeneration of oaks because mainly what we have right now is elm, hickory, ash. Um, we've got a bunch of thorny locusts, just a bunch of trash that somebody high graded a long time ago when they came in here and logged it. So. Just trying to make it better for the future. That's all we're doing. We know it might hurt us in the short run, but we're trying to make it better for the future. 
So normally after we clear a site like this, we wouldn't be dragging all the stuff out of the way. But once this site is clear, basically now uh, we've got it prepped and we're ready. The ground is open. We've got a lot more sunlight coming down and we can uh, come in here and we can seed it down with something that is native or something that's desirable, something that's going to produce good browse. Um, maybe that's good hardwood seedlings or maybe it's shrubs, but we've got some options. And normally um, when you cut all this stuff, I would just leave it lay and, and you're still going to get enough sunlight in. But uh, if you got to walk through this jungle to plant stuff, that's just about a nightmare. So, And plus it'll be easier for us to kind of see the progress and, and it'll be easier for Casey to come back through with his backpack sprayer in the summer. Uh, walk through and anything that re-sprouts or any of the new seedlings that come up after all the soil disturbance He'll be able to walk through and just hit those with just a little dash of uh, Glyphosate in the summer and he'll be able to just keep all that stuff suppressed so that the native stuff that we seed in here Gets a chance to get up and get going so that's why a little bit of extra work on this site, but uh, We can kind of micromanage parts of our property and, and play around a little bit and try different things So that's what we did here this type of work wouldn't probably be practical on a larger scale. So if we were doing this on 40 acres of timber or a 100 acre patch of timber, we wouldn't be hauling stuff around like this by hand. Wouldn't do all of this hand pulling and all that sort of stuff either. You can do, if you have a project that scope, you can hire a lot of this uh, to be done mechanically. Casey had this, this little bowl here, this hillside. We got south facing slope up behind us. There's a nice food plot on top of the hill. He's got some fresh uh, switchgrass getting established there up behind us. So this bottom, it was good cover 10 years ago, but as this stuff has just, just gotten out of control, the deer aren't really using this part of the farm. So that's why we're getting in here by hand and just kind of messing around here to, to get this little site uh, under control without dragging in big equipment. Sacred.